Hi folks, uh, this is uh, Richard Hall here uh, from Stonehenge Aotearoa and I've got a special guest with me today that's over here. Say a few words, Kay. Hello everybody, I'm Kay Leather and I'm Richard's wife and yeah. co-owner of <laughs> <laughs> the events out there, put it that way. Yeah, the camera still hasn't gone over to you yet. No, well, no. you want me to keep on talking about something. Oh, yeah, it keeps on flicking, you see. Yeah, okay, we well, keep going. Yes, dear. Okay, well, um, what I'm going to do is put our laptop on and get some pictures up here. Right, okay. Now, Stonehenge Artier, of course, there's a wonderful picture of me for those on TV come up. I haven't got one okay, but you can hear her voice anyway. But I always like to uh, thank uh, Dan Broughton, who uh, sponsors this program from Why Wrap Our Web Design. And it says the night sky, but today we're going to be looking at something different. We thought I'd look at the day sky. All right, that's what the answer is. Um, we run Stonehenge, and one of the things I've noticed over time is a lot of people have got some weird and wonderful ideas of, about Stonehenge, why it was built and so on. So, And because this thing is essentially a, a mock-up of an ancient obs uh, astronomical observatory, I thought what I would do today is take you through and show you what it's all about and what this stone circle is actually all about. Okay, so let's have a look then. First of all, looking at it, Stonehenge. Why did we call it Stonehenge Aotearoa? Well, Aotearoa, of course, a bit you'll know that's New Zealand. Stonehenge, well, um, people said, well, look, it's, uh, somehow this is, must be a mock of the Stonehenge in Britain because of it is that famous one, all right? Uh, I'll just bring that up now. There it is, the Stonehenge in Britain. But in fact, in actual reality, the word Stonehenge is a generic name for stone circles which have lintels on them. All right? Lintels are the bit on top. Yes, I've got little arrows just come down and pointed, ah. pointed them out. Now, as well as this famous one that's in Britain, there's another one, Stonehenge in uh, Bulgaria, another one in Russia, and so on and so forth. All right? Um, and of course... Ours is not a mock-up of what's in Britain because one of the main prime things is if you want your stone circle to work, it has to be designed for your precise position on the earth. So that is why every stone circle around the world is absolutely unique. We've got... Our past is a great mystery. We think we often think we know a history, but we don't. Now, part and parcel is that history has been written by men mostly by men and what people tend to write down was um sometimes uh p politically justified as on their part right the way in which they recorded things and so on and our view of the world around them will have been very different today than what it was in the past and um i often say to people well you know when they come out to Stonehenge, if there were no roads and no maps, would you know how to get to Auckland from here? And people immediately think, no, I wouldn't actually. See, we're so used to having all this technology around us, we don't realise what it would have been like thousands and thousands of years ago when that technology wasn't around. If Another question is, if you'd never seen a calendar, would you know what month you're in? And again, almost certainly not. But you see, for our ancestors, all of this stuff was a matter of life and death. Because if you sailed at the wrong time, you never came back. If you planted your seeds at the wrong time, your crop could fail. And so this knowledge was all important. And both Kay and I used to um, work at a Carter, Carter Observatory in Wellington, which is now, I believe, called Space Place. And we used to run a series of lectures, and one of them was called Legends and Mysteries of the Night Sky. And we found that people were absolutely fascinated with stone circles and pyramids. And we, we because we'd studied them, realised how, in a sense, the uh, magical things, like stone computers and so on, uh, that if we ever have the opportunity, one day we should build one, but a working one, so that people could come out and see how these things actually worked. All right? And eventually that did come to pass. Um, 
the uh, Stone Circle, uh, we, we put in an application to uh, get some funding from the Royal Society was involved in some of that, wasn't they, Kay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was the Ministry of Research, Science and Technology that had a fund that was for interesting people in science who were not normally interested in science. Mm. And the Royal Society was given the task of uh, administering the allocation of money and overseeing it. Yeah. Okay, I've always got Kay here. She's one of the main players as far as the design of Stonehenge is concerned, uh, our Stonehenge, that is. And it was then uh, we started work in 2000. No, we opened it to the public in 2005. It was built over about a two year period. But just on weekends, it was done with working bees, and people came as far away as the Hawke's Bay. I think about 150 odd people in total were involved. Yeah, the furthest night. away was Canada. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, Nova Scotia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a woman and her daughter who were members of the society who came from Nova Scotia. That's right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. That. yeah, and they, they were very proud of the fact because she was involved with the um, space organisation in Canada. Mm. And she was very proud of the fact that she helped to build a stone circle. Yeah, that's right. And I'll I tell you what, it was quite challenging for everybody else because nobody had actually built one of these, obviously, for thousands of years. And it was a matter of, whereas our ancestors would have built something over probably centuries over time, gradually adding to it, uh, we we had to get it done in a sh- relatively short two period. Two years. Two-year period. And it's still a work in, in progress, isn't it, Kay? As we raise money, it's been gradually adding more and more structures. I think it always will be. Mm. It's, it's not just in the hinge itself, but it's the environs around yeah. the hinge. Yeah. If you like, the whole little farmlet That's right. yeah. is gradually becoming part of it yeah. all. But getting the accuracy of all these things is very, very important. They're just not blocks of stone shoved there to look good, all right? They're very, very precise, all right? OK, so what are, uh, let's go back and look at how things used to work in the past, OK? Looking at those ancient technologies, all right? How did, uh, where did they all come from and so on? Well, stone circles appear to play a major role in it our ancestors learnt they were they learnt the the cycle of the seasons they learnt how to navigate by understanding the cycle of the sun the moon and the stars and that's what it was all about all right and these days of course uh, the average person wouldn't have a clue how to navigate by the stars but once upon a time that was something that every person would have learnt hate when they were a child you know and I could always remember because my love for the countryside came from my gran who used to live out in the countryside and as kids mum used to take us out there and um, well all the food was grown on the land there all the water came out of a well there was no electricity all right and food was also gained by fishing and hunting all right and if us kids had something wrong with us, we got hurt or something, Grand would go out into the garden, we'd get a herb and rub it on the wound and it worked. But these days we've lost all that knowledge. All right? We have to go to the chemists or the doctors to find these things out. But this is how our ancestors did, by a close understanding of the environment around them. So that's how that all sorts of things actually worked. OK. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in a sense, the stone circles are like stone computers because they allow uh, us and their ancestors, by looking at them, even without a calendar, to predict when things were going to happen. Right? So let's have a think about this. OK, first of all, let's go back and have a look at the antiquity of them. We'll look at Stonehenge on Salisbury Plain. And for those of you watching this on TV, you can see an image of it. there, actually at the time of the uh, winter solstice. Um, with the sun rising up and it's ancient it goes back about four and a half thousand years but it's actually one of the last great stone circles to be built we're finding them in mesopotamia now going back more than twelve thousand years in time but just recently with dna analysis and so on they've been making some astounding discoveries about these stone circles that we find okay first of all the builders who built them most, if not all of them, appear to have been hunter-gatherers. So in other words, they predate what you would call civilization. So these were built by hunter-gatherer tribes. Furthermore, 
we know that they appear to have been a meeting place of different tribes. Uh, and indeed, uh, we know from the Stonehenge on Salisbury Plain in Britain that every year at the time of the winter solstice, people travelled all the way from Scotland to meet up with other people at Stonehenge Britain. Now, for those of you who know England, right, Stonehenge is in southern England. And travelling all that distance thousands of years ago, when there's not only was there no such thing as, as cars, there were no roads. So it was no small feat. Right? And because people were meeting at these places, these stone circles, after a while people began to settle in the area. And in turn, that gave rise to the very first villages and towns. So it's a beginning to appear like that these stone circles were the starting points of civilization itself. Well, what do we know? I've, something to, worth remembering, first of all, is that when we look at these stone circles, there's nothing, we've got no written history of them. So all of it is interpreted by um, archaeology. First of all, in most cases, they, they appear to have some sort of religious significance. There seem, appears to be a temple area near the centre of the stone circle. So first of all, we have the temple there. All right? And even today, uh, for those of you watching the TV, is a photograph from Stonehenge with the, all the Druids coming out to, uh, to Stonehenge and so on. And incidentally, the Druids did not build the Stonehenge in Britain either. Right? That was in existence thousands of years before the Druids came along. They simply uh, adopted it, wasn't it really, Kay? Yeah, they utilised it. Yeah, that's right. mm. and that's the same down through time, all right? Now, you've all heard of cavemen and cave women, right? Undoubtedly, this term cavemen, the idea that people used to live in 